Have you ever said to yourself, gee, I sure do love Dynasty Warriors, but I would also really like something that plays like that, but maybe with more color and pizzazz, like an anime? Well, you certainly have options. There's Berserk and the Band of the Hawk, which is a great choice, although maybe a bit more on the dark and gory side. And there's the Dragon Quest Heroes games. But if neither of those really scratch that itch, then might I suggest the Fate Extella games. In particular, Fate Extella Link, which is a great game. Now, as far as I can tell, there's basically two kinds of people when it comes to the Fate series. There are those who have been keeping up with the franchise for well over 10 years with the manga and the anime and the video games, and they have a firm understanding of the nuanced characters and interweaving storylines. And then there's people like me who basically have no idea what they're doing, but enjoy well-made action games. And Fate Xtella Link is definitely that. Like the last game, Link has a fair amount of visual novel style dialogue scenes which are well done and do have some branching story paths, but the main event for me is the action and it is fantastic once it really gets going and it definitely satisfies that Musou craving, at least for me. Once you're able to get through a rather annoying barrage of tutorials anyway. You have your basic light attack and heavy attack combos, along with several special attacks with extremely over-the-top animations, including a new attack that links you up with other members of your team to obliterate enemies together, as the title insinuates. This new mechanic doesn't really amount to much other than just another way to wipe out large chunks of enemies at a time, but there's nothing really wrong with that, I guess. That is sort of the name of the game here, and it's fun to do. Most Musou games have you running from one corner of the map to the other to take out various enemies, but here you travel between sectors in these sort of vortex portals. That, coupled with lots of dashing and swift mobility options, makes traveling feel really tight and pretty much eliminates all downtime in between fights. There's also perhaps a little more strategy in the battles than you might be used to in a game like this. Sometimes a team member might be getting attacked by a boss from clear across the map, so you need to choose how to best manage your time and where you're needed the most to keep everybody alive. There's also a handful of other types of objectives and battles thrown in, which is nice. And with all of these Warriors games starting to blur together at this point, it's nice to see Fate x -Tella Link mix a few things up like this. Now, as you might expect, there's a lot of characters or servants to unlock and play as, which all have their own weapons and movesets, of course, and lots of costumes and different abilities for them to unlock, and a hub world where you can talk to all the characters and build up your relationships. You don't have to do much of that if you don't want to, but it's there if you want it. Speaking of the characters and the story, like I alluded to earlier, the story is pretty much completely inaccessible to anybody who isn't intimately familiar with the history of the franchise. So I can't really comment too much on where it goes and what happens since I lack pretty much all context for everything and honestly, I ended up skipping quite a bit of it. <laughs> It's not generally my style to skip story elements in games, but with the Fate x Tele games, it really just feels like there's no point in me trying to follow along. Right when I feel like I'm starting to understand what's happening, somebody from the moon shows up and he's part computer and I don't, I just don't. So part of me hates that because I really do enjoy the game and I'd like to know what the hell's going on, but I also realize that it's not the Fate franchise's fault that I'm over a decade late to the party. So with that in mind, what I can generally say about the story is that I would have appreciated some sort of an olive branch for those of us who are new to the franchise, but it is what it is. Because there's so much variety and so many characters within the game itself, I really don't feel like I'm really missing a whole lot of the experience, although I probably am. I also have to give a shout out to the soundtrack. The music is awesome. Throughout the game, the soundtrack touches on just about every genre imaginable, but still somehow manages to feel consistently appropriate. 
Definitely a soundtrack worth getting if you're into that kind of thing. I'm glad GameStop had this special edition in stock when I went to pick it up. The Fate Extella Link soundtrack definitely earned a spot in my car alongside Half Genie Hero, Ragnarok Odyssey Ace, Metal Gear Solid 4, and the rest of my favorite soundtracks that I keep around for long drives. <laughs> For longtime fans of the Fate series, I suspect you'll be happy with what's here. I'm not sure if the story holds up compared to other iterations in the franchise, but there is a lot of story here, and if that's what you're looking for, you're gonna get it. But if you're like me and you basically get nothing out of the story, well, this is still a well above average Musou game with tons of unlockable characters, items, and techniques to learn. As far as gameplay goes, it does pretty much everything the last game did but better, and for that alone, I highly recommend it to anybody who enjoys the genre, but would maybe like to try a different flavor of it.